Hey guys! Today I want to take a look at the whole topic of impedance and try to break it down a bit because for me as a hobbyist I had a hard time to understand it when I was confronted with it for the first time. There are great explanations for impedance out there. However, you have to have quite a read to find them because, for example, the Wikipedia article on electrical impedance is full of formulas and complex number mathematics. Don't get me wrong, this information is of course fully correct and to be able to calculate and understand every part of the topic you may have to know all this. However, this is barely the case and especially for beginners you can simplify it very much just to get a feeling on how impedance may affect your circuit. Let's start with this formula from Wikipedia that defines the two parts that impedance consists of. However, at first we remove the complex unit because to understand the basic concept it really is not important to think in complex numbers. Much better. Now we're left with the basic resistance which we already know and the reactance part. But let's have a quick look at the resistance first. The unit for resistance is ohm and we can calculate the resistance in our basic circuit by using Ohm's law. Ignore the lamp, although it is a resistive load, so basically a resistor. If we want 94 milliamps of current flowing through our lamp, we can calculate the size of the resistor we need. At 7.5 volt and 95 milliamps, this turns out to be around 80 ohms to get the current we want. So far, so good. Now we can also change to an AC power source and nothing really changes in our circuit so far. However, we can also calculate the power that our resistor dissipates using the usual formula. If we insert our values, we see that the resistor has to dissipate over 700 milliwatts. This is not very efficient. Can we do it any better? Of course we can. Let's now change the resistor with a capacitor like this. Hey, the circuit still works as expected and even the current through the lamp remains the same. Why is it so? Well, let's now take a look at the reactance that is the other part of impedance. A resistor is a pure resistive impedance or a resistive load as the name may suggest. A capacitor is a reactive impedance or a capacitive load. The reactive part is also measured in ohms and for a capacitor we can calculate it like this. X, which is the resistance, equals 1 over 2 pi multiplied by frequency and capacitance. So we can rearrange this formula a bit to calculate the size of the capacitor we need, so we still have an equivalent of 80 ohms. The frequency in our circuit is 2 kHz. We want a reactance of 80 ohms and the rest are all constants. So this is all simple math and gives us a value of around 1 microfarad. Since we removed the resistor from the circuit, our total impedance is now only defined by the capacitor, but basically it is the same as before. But what we did actually change now is the power dissipation of our circuit. The only resistive load in our circuit now is the lamp, and since current doesn't really flow through our capacitor, this doesn't really count into our power dissipation. Great job! Our circuit really gained a lot in terms of efficiency. Now you just have to remember that in the formula for our reactants we had a frequency as a parameter and since it is a factor in the denominator our reactants and therefore our impedance gets lower and lower the higher our frequency gets. This is a useful property if you want to design a simple analog filter which will be part of my next video. One thing we did not talk about are inductors which are kind of the third basic element in analog circuits. Since we already know the correlation between capacity and impedance, this one is really easy. Denominator and numerator are simply switched and thus also the frequency and the inductance have an inverted influence on the total impedance. So that's all for today. In the next video we'll have a look at how we can use reactants to design simple pass filters like low, high and band pass filters. If you like this video, make sure to check out my others and also do the usual YouTube thing and like, share or even subscribe. See you next time.